Alright, chapter 18, Foul Play. And it foul is spelled with a W, you know, that thing. When I was young, my father took me into the city. I'd never seen anything like it. The tallest things around where I lived were the trees, but here? The trees were scraggly, sickly things, growing out of the sidewalks, ever 30 feet, 30 feet or so. They barely reached three stories tall. I remember looking at my first skyscraper. I actually fell over backwards from craning my head back to try and see the top. There were new sights and smells, new tastes and new noises. Everything was loud, fast, and dirty. <laughs> the people weren't that much different. In all honesty, I didn't like it that much. Too many bodies, too many cars, too many everything. Gives me a nice, uh, give me a nice shack in the woods, a good book, a stash of booze, and I'm pretty much beset for life. Cities were always a little overwhelming for me. The irony of this is that I'd find myself living in one several years down the road, in a dingy little apartment above the Hungry Dragon re restaurant, breathing in the smell of noodles and sesame chicken until it was all I could taste, even if I decided to eat something strong. It was a quiet little place, but it was mine. I spent most of my time there, avoiding the hustle and bustle of the outside world. It wasn't that I was a closet case, I just didn't like the city. It made me nervous, skeptic, sometimes afraid for my life. The time spent in the solitude of Daring Dew's treehouse did me wonders. I relaxed for the first time in a long time. Of course, I had to fear for my life on more than one occasion, but hey, it's a jungle out here. Literally. When I came to Wet Hoof, it wasn't all bad. It was a small town, only about five or six hundred inhabitants. I could always get away from that, even though there was a wall. A large ring of crop fields and grasslands encircled the actual town like a donut. Then one found the wall. Walking through the fields was soothing for me. With the battle only hours away, I needed to relax. Now, however, that was probably impossible. In the dead of the night, I hadn't been able to see the full scale of the reinforcements. Now that it was daylight, I was boggled by what I saw. There was, to put it simply, a city where there had only been space. Tents, tents, and surprise! More tents! A tent city! It completely encircled Wet Hoof, arranged in new rows like streets. Dirt paths already pound flat by hooves. There were even tall poles with glowing orbs attached to them, uh, every once in a while. Street lights, I guessed. Ponies trotted here and there, some in protective barding armor, and others in just their coats. Pegasi earth ponies and unicorns were all in representation. It was a bit overwhelming for me, I have to admit. But I just have to learn more. An opportunity like this was irresistible to my inner scientist, so I whipped out my psychology binder, which I had snagged on the way out of the barracks, and began to stroll through the new streets, taking down notes or observations at what I saw. Coconut, who now had nothing else to do thanks to my accidental frosting bomb, <laughs> trotted along next to me, clearly just as impressed as I was with the encampment. Above it all... The benevolent Mercy hovered from where she was moored to the barracks bell tower. She was a beautiful thing indeed. It was built much differently than any other airship I'd ever seen. Instead of an undercarriage built into the bottom of the sleek silver balloon, there was actually a ship hanging underneath the heavy chains, minus a mast. Huh. This just blew me away. Such technology! Such innovation! So much science! I was curious about everything... They say curiosity killed the cat, but I'm a dog. Nothing to worry about, right? <laughs> Wrong. Oi! Tall, dumb, and fairy! A familiar voice shattered over the hubbub, distracting me from what could have been a glorious, intense nerdgasm. <laughs> I, this, I, spun on the su I spun on the spot, smoothly sliding my binder into my toga. I cocked an eyebrow at the speaker. Well, 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 if it isn't the mercenary I'd been hearing about. It was that griffin again. He was covered in all sorts of feathers, reddish gold all around, except for his face and chest, which were white. He cut his way through the crowd like a knife. Most of the passing ponies avoided him like the plague. They had a good reason, I suspect. That massive black sword strapped to his back looked like it could split a mountain in half. The mercenary swaggered up, calm as you please, and fixed me a look with hard blue eyes. I crossed my arms and met his gaze as evenly as I could. It was with strange satisfaction that I noticed I was a great deal taller than him. But then again, I was the equivalent of an NBA player here. So, you're that dog I've been hearing so much about. Gecko, right? He said easily. His stare never wavered. It was rather unnerving. Echo, 
I lifted a single paw to scroll. Sure, sure. The crowd by this time had resumed its natural course, with the exception of three new rocks in the stream, and still he kept staring. It was beginning to creep me out. Can we help you with something, mate? Coconut finally said. Yep, was all he said. Coconut and I exchanged a glance. And that would be? Well, for starters, you busted up half the stuff in my tent. Ah, I had a feeling that one might come back to haunt me. Sorry about that. I sheepishly scratched out of my head. Accidents happen. Maybe he'll forgive and forget. That isn't nice. I'd always appreciate an apology. But a sorry won't cut it. Ah, fuckberries. Then what will? I recrossed my arms and tilted my head forward, throwing the top of my face into shadow. It's not only, uh, it not only served to possibly intimidate, but allowed me to furiously blink tears of pain away. Staring back at him was suicide. <laughs> I've got a little proposal for you, he said finally. I've got a bunch of broken stuff, and I'm rather upset over that. You, the idiot who broke it all, you're gonna help me cool off as payment. I swallowed loudly, hoping his hearing wasn't as good as mine, or I'd have been a dead giveaway. I call time out. <laughs> Coconut and I turned our backs. I bent low so he could whisper. Mate, I don't like this. Mex aren't exactly the nicest sort of ponies. Hey, this fellow ain't even a pony. The brown stallion was clearly as worried as I was. Plus, he's under Frosty's payroll, apparently. If he tries something, which he probably will, and something happens to you, we're going to be bucked into the plots tonight. All of this will be for nothing. I nodded, frowning before turning back to the griffin. And if I say no? The mercenary smirked before lifting up one leg and snapping his fingers. Suddenly, several ponies that had been walking by turned towards us and stopped. They looked suspiciously bloodthirsty. The other passerby simply melted around us. You don't want to say that. He finally blinked. The entire conversation had been spent intently regarding us. Shit. It never fails. I always run into the crazy ones. Always! But still, I needed to play along. I couldn't pay my debt to Tithus as I would if I was dead. The battle was tonight, after all. Damned if I do. Double damned if I don't. Fine. The feathered bastard cracked a grin at this and gestured me to follow him with a scaly talon. I warily did so. The surrounding ponies, who were undoubtedly also mechanaries, flanked either side of Coconut and I, preventing us from wandering off. Ugh. This was probably a good time for Disarray to show up. Where the hell was he, anyway? In the skies, high, high above Wet Hoof, a stormy gray alicorn. What? Clad in a colorful robe, lit gracefully upon the thin cirrus cloud. He glanced around before tossing his hood back to reveal crafty pink eyes that scanned the surrounding cloud layer with ease. The alicorn sighed and stretched his wings. It felt good to be able to use them again. Even. Ugh. When below, he had to go about covered. Up here, though, past the heights of even the strongest pegasi, he was safe from the prying eyes of others. The soft whoosh of wings alerted him to the arrival of company. He turned his head to the side, smirking at the sight of his guest. He was about to speak when the sound of yet another pair of wings to his other side um, silenced whatever he was about to say. The alicorn cocked an eyebrow at the second arrival, who'd stepped forward. It is good to see you again, Cousin Disarray. <gasps> it began. You've been away far too long. The first finished with perfect timing. Disarray coughed politely into one hoof. Um, yes, well, had a bit of falling out with Mother. Had to lay low for a while. Get off the family's radar. Oh, and did I mention the part where I've been trapped for the past, oh, I don't know, 2,000 or so years? The second laughed softly. It sounded like the tinkling of bells. What is this radar you speak of, cousin? We never understood where you get these strange things from. The first continued. Even I don't understand the place I get them from, <laughs> Disarray sighed, shaking his head before looking up. It's good to see you again, cousins. I've been quite lonely. The first smiled, while the second went over to the edge of the cloud and peered over. Ah! But it seems you've been quite busy socializing. The foreigner you travel with and his companions. 
I never imagined you of all ponies to have friends. Disarray humped, and melodramatically pointed his nose in the air. I wouldn't call them that. More like... He waved a hoof around as he thought. Like acquaintances. Oh, and I'm sure they'd love to meet you two. Bet Fluffy would get a kick out of it. Perhaps. But still, you're changing, Disarray. Oh, yes. Two millennium of solitary confinement does that to you. The alicorn dryly quipped. Undoubtedly. But there are greater changes in store for you, as well as those you follow. Disarray said nothing for a while, instead opting to look down at the distant green splotch known as the Great Southern Rainforest. From here, he could see the edges of the jungle, far off in the north. The world had truly been transformed since his imprisonment. Once, there had been a desert where forest now stood. Where mighty plains had once rolled, mountains had risen and fallen. Change. It was constant that even his chaotic nature had to abide by. Abide by. The metamorphosis, he finally said. It comes to us all, and you're long overdue. The two joined him at the cloud's edge. Hmm. He felt the comforting touch on his shoulders as they softly rubbed up against him. How his mother? And Auntie Luna? I understand she suffered a similar fate to my own. They've missed you greatly. You should return to them at once. You will be welcomed with open wings, cousin. They've changed as well in the time you've been gone. Disarray frowned. As tempting as it was to return home after all these years, he couldn't bring himself to do it. Not yet. Maybe never. Only you two know of my return. He switched the conversation's direction. Yes, we were nearby when you first emerged, though it pains us to carry this burden. Much has transpired since that time of grief and sorrow. It would do well to find out what. <clears throat> Disarray thoughtfully tugged on his mustache and wrapped his wings around them. Maybe I will, when I've had my fill of adventuring. They've waited two thousand years. They can wait a little longer. I've a whole new world to see now. He glanced down at Wethoof and smiled a crafty smile. And I have a feeling it's going to be getting the, quite the shake-up soon. He rubbed a hoof on his chest, inspecting it for a few moments, then firmly stomping it into the cloud. Oh, I heard Cousin Mia Mora Cadenza got engaged. Ooh, what? What? So Draconici and Alicorns? Metamorphous? What? <laughs> so Discord is an Alicorn? Or something? I'm so confuzzled. Oh my god, wow. I don't know, that's weird. Okay. To the captain of the Royal Guard, no less. How did that come about? Two crackled grins that spoke of a very interesting story. Yo, fuzzball! I snapped too, glancing around. The mercenary camp wasn't like the rest of the tent city. It was a simple circle of tents, with a fire pit off to one side, a few barrels in between the ragged tents. A wide open space took up the middle of made of dry, hard packed earth. The griffin eyed him from across the clearing. Scruffy looking ponies, mostly Pegasi, and motley a crew of griffins, stood a around the edges, curiously watching the spectacle. These were Mecronaries, otherwise known as the Griffin Pirates. Their leader was, of course, the crazy one with the broadsword. His name was Griffin. Griffin the Griffin, to be precise. Because, you know, there's Griffin spelled G-I-R-I-F-F-I-N, and then G-R-Y-P-H-O-N. I know, right? Silly name. <gasps> I turned to face him fully from where I'd been idly inspecting a patchwork of Chent. While not nearly well equipped as the rest of the forces, the mechanaries surely looked uh, looked the part of the pirate section uh, of the title. Griffin unslung his sword and stabbed it into the earth, halfway up to the hilt, before swaggering up to me. He didn't stop until he was in my personal phone booth of space, a firm scowl on his beak. Uh oh, this doesn't this doesn't look good for Echo. Can't we just talk this over? I suggested. He snorted, idly inspecting a talon. Maybe you haven't heard, but that's not how we pirates do things round here. We solve our problems with our talons and hooves. We're rough, tough, and bad as sin. And I'm the baddest of the bunch. I'm so bad. 
He, le he leaned in closer. That I'm afraid of waking up in the morning. Because of how bad I might have gotten overnight. <laughs> Several of the gathered ponies snickered. Ooh, he's gonna get it. Better get the shovel. He'll have us taking away whatever's left. <laughs> <laughs> Coconut surrounded by a ragged assortment of pirates on the sidelines rolled his eyes. Seriously? Smack talk? Very well. Prepare to meet your maker! I leaned down as well, until we were almost eyeball to eyeball, then pulled back. So, it's a match of intellect, then. I'd rather not have a bottle of wits with you. After all, it's considered unsportsmanlike to fight an unarmed opponent. Oh, snap. No, he didn't! Oh, yes, he did! Griffin laughed. Ho oh, oh, ho, I like you. You're going to be fun. He tilted his head toward the monstrous black broadsword in the ground. You like? Saw you looking at it. That's made of dragon scale. Right there. Cuts through bad everything. I nodded. Nice. Then I undid my spear from my harness and firmly planted it on the ground. Spear hit first. You like? He nodded too. Have a closer look, then. I pulled back on the top of the haft, bending the shaft a bit, and let go. The spear whipped forward and bopped him on the beak. Bap! Nobody moved for a full ten seconds. You could hear a pin drop on a pillow. <laughs> then he laughed again. The pirates laughed. Everybody laughed. Then he scowled again and said, You got some fight in you. Good. Let's get it out, then. We're gonna have a little throwdown. You and me. Settle our differences the pirate way. I maintained my stoic position of arms crossed, hood down. Just maintain your cool, man. Don't let them see you shaking. Don't let them see your knees knocking. Griffin suddenly spun around and swaggered back to his sword. Ring it up, he called. I let out a breath, and I didn't know I had been holding it in. A couple of pirates scrambled forward and hastily dug a rough circle in the ground around us. I guessed it had to be about twenty feet in diameter. When the ring was finished... They quickly scampered back to the sidelines. I saw a few began... What? I saw a few begin placing bets. <laughs> I awkwardly pulled my spear up and cocked it over one shoulder. I almost dropped. My palms were so sweaty. God, I hate crowds. The head pirate ripped his mighty blade out of the ground and leveled it at me. Blunt him! He balked. Oh, I'm getting the accent now. Two unicorns stepped forward from their ranks, horns aglow, surrounding the black blade of his sword and the silvery white of my spearhead with a sparkly aura. The first one forced out of the ring, or knocked unconscious, loses the match. No step outs. Do this and we're square. Ready? See, the thing is, if, if you lose, w what happens after that? What if you just step out? Okay, see you later. Oh, snap. You won. I don't know. You lost, but I don't care anymore, because I won. Yay. Like, because it's in this little social group of pirates. Who, Who's to care? I don't know. Just odd. I glanced down at my spear. It was visibly shaking, along with the rest of me. For the love of Betty White. If I'd been presented with this suddenly, I wouldn't have had time to think about it. I would have been fine. Where is my boost of adrenaline when I need it? This is very, very bad, mainly because here I was in the ring with a professional soldier who was going to beat the tar out of me holding a weapon, and I had no idea how to use this fucking thing. Go! Son of a bit whack! Thud! Ouch. Now that's gotta hurt, Coconut muttered to himself. He'd managed to slink out of the crowd of pirates and around the ring, and was now standing on top of one of the few barrels near a tent to get a better view of the action. And by action... That meant watching the griffin open several different cans of whoop-ass on his opponent. All at once. Boof! The sudden sight of the diamond dog spinning crazily through the air was, despite the situation, slightly hilarious. The big, usually stoic creature was being thrashed around by a being half his size. Coconut shook his head, trying to repress a grin at his friend's expense. But he was in real danger. That much Coconut was sure of. Time to focus. Whatever was going on here was actually quite commonplace on a pirate ship. Two crew members have a disagreement and agree to settle their aggression in the ring. He was somewhat familiar with pirate culture. 
Several days ago, during Wet Hoof's heyday, airships from across Equestria occasionally stopped by to partake in the gem trade. Occasionally, some of the crew members would stop by on the tavern that he'd spent so much time growing up in. Strange tales of far-off places, exotic creatures, and different cultures often permeated or permeated the tavern's common room late in the evening. He'd spent many a sleepless night listening to such tales. Coconut sighed wistfully. Good to see that they had fi- that they had finally paid off for something. A sudden blur of motion to his side caused him to glance around. A pegasus had swiftly landed on the barrel next to him. Tannish gold coat, a pocketed shirt, signature pith helmet cocked back over the charcoal mane. Coconut's eyes bugged out of his head in shock. Miss Daring do he gasped. He'd heard rumors she was in town. The pegasus had a near legendary status in these parts. Her exploits were even turned into stories after all. She'd been buying supplies from Wethu for years now, but had rarely actually visited the place. The explorer merely nodded in acknowledgement, watching the fight with a worried expression. Sorry to be rude, but that's my friend in there, she said. You don't say. Coconut was baffled. That diamond dog sure knew how to get around. <laughs> they watched as... Get around. Hmm. <laughs> they watched as Griffin executed a lightning-fast backflip over the reeling diamond dog, booting him in the back with a powerful kick. The dog was sent flying, almost to the line carved in the ground. He rolled to avoid a crushing tackle from the Griffin, uh, scrabbling desperately towards the edge in an attempt to flee. Oh no, you don't! cried the pirate, seizing his victim by the tail and sending him flying once again into the center of the ring. The crowd cheered. Tearing Dew shot Coconut a look. Say, don't you know him as well? Coconut nodded solemnly. Aye. She rounded on him and bluntly demanded, Then are you with them or us? Define them. Coconut lowered his voice, both eyebrows raised. <laughs> if you're asking me, I'm in the league with these hotheads, then no. I'm with Tithus. Why do you ask? Him. She said simply, pointing into the crowd, off to the far left. He's had it in for Echo since we came here. Coconut followed her hoof, running his gaze over the ragged mechanaries. Celestia's pearly flanks, he cursed. There, standing in the shadow of the tent, was the mayor of Wethoof. Mayor Frostnap. What? This isn't good. He's going to try something. These pirates, they're in his payroll. I agree. Question is, what? The explorer watched Frost intently. Coconut ran a hoof over his short, blonde mohawk, turning his gaze back to the fight. BAM! POW! He winced. Echo was going to be fleeing that one in the morning. Or feeling. <laughs> he hopefully uh, wasn't planning on having pups in the future. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Coconut stomped a hoof on the barrel. We can't stop it alone, miss. Let's work together on this, yeah? Daring do simply... Um, grimly smiled. Yeah, you keep watch on the mayor. I'll get ready to stop the fight if something happens. Thanks for the help, uh... She trailed off. Coconut, miss. Pleased to meet you. Always been a fan. The chef grinned. The chef grinned back before hopping off the barrel and slinking his way around the edges of the crowd without so much as making a noise. Being raised in the rainforest had some advantages that other ponies wouldn't expect. Namely... Every pony who lived here knew how to move like a ghost. It wasn't just a useful skill when venturing into the forest. It was a necessity. Stealth means survival. Yeah! On silent hooves. Wait, even before the nature got all... Because of Tataris and shit? Whatever. On silent hooves, Coconut positioned himself behind a tent. Frost was sitting at the far end of the small alley between two more. Still as a statue. Coconut peeked his head around the corner. There! A crate! Perfect to hide under! Coconut gingerly stepped into the alleyway, not daring to breathe. The mayor paid no him no heed. Still. One step. Two steps. Three steps. Still no hint that he'd been discovered. The earth phony swallowed nervously. The box was in his reach. He gently, oh so very gently, lifted the lid up with one hoof. Creak. I hate it when there's that creak sound. Oh my god. It's so loud. Well, horse apples. Coconut froze. Frost snaps ear twitched. The world suddenly shrank to the size of the alley. <laughs> Unbelievably, the mayor ignored the noise. 
coconut quickly slipped into the crate and lowered it over himself. He was closer now, close enough to hear Frost muttering to himself. With what? No, no, no. We know what we need to do, the mayor said quietly to himself. Coconut pressed his face into the side of the box, straining to hear. She'll make sure nothing happens to them. She promised. This has to happen. Frost paused and shifted his gaze to his side. What? No. I'd never. She'd never. He seemed to be talking to some pony that wasn't there. Coconut cocked an eyebrow. He knew that the mayor's mental capacities had been somewhat, mm, skewed. It wasn't a secret. Regardless, Frost was the best leader they'd ever had. Even with his eccentricities, Wet Hoof had been willing to forgive him for those on account of his history, but still, he seemed like he'd slipped even more. No! Frost suddenly growled. That thing as well? The sticks! How could it accept them without you? I thought... He flinched backwards, almost colliding with the box Coconut was hiding in. Not her! I can't do it to her! Frost's head abruptly whipped to the side, as if he stumbled. And he stumbled, as if struck. Yeah! The unicorn staggered back to his hooves, breathing hard. You're right, he finally said. This needs to end now. We can't let any pony stand in our way. His horn flashed. A sharp whistle pierced the air. For the greater good. Then the mayor turned and bolted down the alley. The second he had rounded the corner, Coconut exploded from under the box. That had to have been get that had to have been some kind of signal. He dashed into the crowd. The pirates suddenly turned and braced themselves together, preventing him from seeing the ring. Daring! he yelled. Hopefully she'd react in time to whatever was going to happen next. Daring Dew heard the call over the din. She brought out her whip, eyes scanning wildly around for any hint of danger. Oh no! One of the unicorns maintaining the blunting spell suddenly stopped. Stopped channeling. Why are there two stopped? Stupid grammar mistakes. The sparkles surrounding the griffin's fearsome sword evaporated as he brought it over his head. The diamond dog sprawled on the ground before him. Echo! Look out! Daring screamed. She sprang off the barrels, her whip already in motion. Something wrapped around her hoof, rudely halting her flight as she, uh, sl and slamming her into the earth. It was that blasted unicorn wrapping a telekinetic grip around her, around her leg. She twisted backwards towards the pit. Griffin's sword was held high, the black bade painfully reflecting in the sunlight. Too slow, thought Daring. Daring could only watch as Echo looked up from where he was lying prone. He twitched, his pupils suddenly narrowed into predatory skills. He lunged, mouth wide open in a primal snarl. The blade crammed down. Screech! The griffin came at me like a torpedo, clear, clearing the gap between us in a split second. He rammed me hard in the stomach before pulling back and bashing the side of my head with his sword. Small bluebirds began to spin around my face as I comically staggered about. The sword flickered out again, taking my feet out from under me and sending me sprawling. I took up to um, see him poised for an overhead chop. The blow struck me in the shoulder, denting the single ep epaulet ep I don't know. Epaulet that I wore. You know, his shoulder thing. He, the, had the blade not been magically dulled, that might have actually taken my arm off. Griffin suddenly lunged forward, grabbing me by the token, and beat his powerful wings. We rocketed off the ground to several feet above the circle before he flipped and slung me back down to the earth. I hit the ground with a wheeze. Woof! That, that, that was a terrible wheeze. Whatever, with a wheeze. And attempted to climb out of the small crater my impact had left. Something crashed into my backside. I felt the grip of powerful talons lifting me into the air once again. Oh, hell no! Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me! I craned my neck and chomped down on the avian leg, gripping my shoulder. Griffin screeched and let go, giving me a powerful kick with his lion half. Once again, I cratered into the pit, but this time I rose from the hole. I was smiling. Griffin landed some distance away, examining the glass on his leg. I smirked, licking my lips and spitting out a feather. Tastes like chicken. Okay, now, that was a bad move. This time, I didn't even have time to register the movement of the sword, it was so fast. It took me on the arm, sending a lance of pain through my system as I dropped my spear in shock. He danced around me, whirling like a top. The second blow landed on the back of my knee, roughly sending me into a kneel. A final blow struck the back of my head, 
Stars exploded through my vision as I felt two paws buck my back, sending me flying across the area to land a few feet away from the next line. Sanctuary! Sweet salvation on a silver platter! Run away! <laughs> I scrambled forwards, towards the line of surrender. Oh no you don't! See? He could just step out. Came his voice from behind me. Something grabbed my tail and heaved, sending me spinning through the air once again. A brutal collision mid-air resulted in me eating dirt once again. Gods, I love the taste of dirt. It's so... Dirty! <laughs> I rolled, barely avoiding another swing of the sword. It stuck in the ground, and the griffin heaved at it with the intention to continue to the beating. This is my chance! I lashed out with the rear leg, kicking Griffin's talons away from the blade, and sprang, tucking into a ball and steamrolling him into the ground. Coming out of the roll, I spun around and tried to swipe him with a powerful pawful of claws. No dice. He nibbled he nimble <laughs> nibbled he nimbly dipped backward every time I swung at him, avoiding me with the grace of a professional boxer. I overextended on a slash, and he stepped inside my reach, smoothly nudging my arm away and headbutting me in the face. Nice. I sat down hard as he spun on his forelegs and delivered a bone-shattering kick to the center of my chest. I slid several feet before coming to the rest on flat on my back, the breath completely knocked out of me. There was a sharp blast of sound, like a whistle. It rang painfully in my ears, like nails on a chalkboard. Ugh. I heard someone yelling something. Was... Was that coconut? The griffin seemed to register the noise as well, turning from me to calmly stride over to where his sword was still wedged in the earth and yank it free. He approached me slowly, his weapon cocked jauntily over his shoulder. Well, that was fun, he said. But I think I'm done here. Got to go make my bit somehow. He raised the black blade high, like an executioner's axe. No hard feelings or anything. Just doing my job. I blinked in reply, too winded to do anything else. The sparkly aura around the weapon suddenly vanished. Oh, shit. Okay, so this is a scene that happened until the Daring Do part. Okay. Echo! Look out! Someone screamed. I turned to look. There, almost inside the ring, was Daring Do, sprawled on the ground as the unicorn formally maintained the blunting spell dragged her back into the crowd. Our eyes met. In them, I could see myself reflected in the magnet magenta depths. Something inside me woke up. An unbelievable surge of heat burst out of my gut and screamed through my extremities. Something funny happened to all my senses, all sharpened dramatically. Hearing, sight, touch, taste, smell, and there was something else too. Something I'd never felt before. For a split second, my body flickered, like it had in the dream. Short, dark fur, greenish paws. That split second was all it took for the blade to fall. Move! Something inside me demanded. I obliged, completely out of control of my body. I lunged forward, mouth agape to meet the attack. Screech! And there's the screech noise that we heard earlier. Everything ground to a halt. The pirate stood in utter disbelief. Coconut shoved his way through until he came to the pit, his expression suddenly matching the others perfectly. Daring struggled up from where she was on the ground. The unicorn spell completely forgotten. Her jaw dropped. They looked at the sight in complete dumbfoundment. The diamond dog had stopped the blow by catching the sword in mid-swing with his teeth. The dog suddenly became a blur of motion, twisting his neck, ripping the sword from gr the griffin's um, gasp, and f fl to fling it to the earth some distance away. It would have been cooler if he just sort of chewed up the sword. <laughs> that would have been so epic. <laughs> oh my god. He sprang up, took a few steps, cocked one fist back, and punched the pirate right in the face. Where Griffin became a feathered bullet as he was catapulted right off his talons through the crowd, knocking them aside like bowling pins before blasting through his tent, which promptly collapsed on him. Echo relaxed and spat out a tooth, looking at it disinterestedly for a moment before mashing it into the dirt with a paw. I shook my head violently, coming out of the strange rush that had once again saved my life. I mentally reviewed the times it has done so past. As a weedle's pets? In pieces. As a weedle? Rotting in a pit. Big Mama? Cracked ribs. Pirate? Blown off like Team Rocket on a bad day. <laughs> Echo? Four. Death? Zero! <laughs> Death is a score counter. Uh, glancing over at the wreckage of the tent, 
I saw Griffin pulling himself out of the record, dazedly shaking his head. I held up my paw, inspecting it carefully. How the hell did I do that? I don't even remember it. There was a sword coming at me, and then... Screaming? I sighed in disbelief. This was like the Hydra all over again. One second, I'm gonna die. The next, I do something awesome, and I'm not even aware of it. Hey, look! Daring! I cheerfully waved to her. The explorer pushed her way out of the still-stunned crowd, quickly joined by Coconut. Hi, I said. Oh, wait, they've never met before. Better introduce him. Daring, this is... Coconut, we're all already acquainted. Daring patted the big guy on the shoulder, who looked at the spot. She touched him like it had turned to solid gold. <laughs> she looked around. Uh, we should probably get going now. Coconut snapped out of his daze. Oh, yeah, yep. I, and I got to talk to you, mate. Uh, Frost was here. Probably planned this whole thing. I scored the, the crowd, squinting in vain to try and find my elusive adversary. No luck availed me. The mayor of Wet Hoof had yet to actually meet me face to face. And yet, I was strangely glad for that. Things would probably get pretty ugly if we did. A commotion on the far side of the crowd got to my uh, attention. The pirates parted as five familiar figures cut through them, each armored in the signature forest. Uh, so the, so, the signature forest-colored barding of the Wet Hoof Town Guard, except for the lead, who wore a battered but polished silver curious. Captain Tithus flanked by his lieutenants, Cloud Nine, Sparky, and Baritone, trained withering gazes on these pirates as they reached the center of the pit. Ginger Snap, who brought up the rear, broke off and approached us. Heard the commotion. Sorry it took so long, she grunted. She had uh, the thick blade goggles now around her neck and turned to look at the others. Oh, she's like Zuko from Avatar! Yeah! <sighs> I don't know where that came from, but she totally is, right? Totally. Who had begun to drag the dazed griffin mercenary out of the wreckage. Tithus's horn sparked to life, surrounding him in a thick, semi-transparent golden sphere, which he easily levitated. Some of the pirates made forwards as if to save their leader. Sparky crouched, intense sparks beginning to shoot off her mane and coat. Cloud Nine threateningly whipped open her wings and sent a powerful gust of wind out of the ruffled manes of everyone, pr every pony present. Baritone growled and stomped a single hoof to the ground. A ring of cracks spiraled out from the point of impact. I wouldn't do that if I were you, he grumbled. Ginger Snap, escort Echo to someplace safe, preferably away from the barracks. He would be expected there, Titus barked. Oh, they're hiding him. Hold until nightfall. I'll signal when it's time for action. He glanced at the captive griffin. As for you, he growled. We're going to have a chat. Griffin the Griffin scowled before attempting to cleave his way out of the sphere. The sword hit the barrier and bounced back, vibrating like a metal turning rod. As the four brave guards left the circle, dragging his prison with them, he put his talons up onto it and looked back ple pleadingly. I gave him the finger. <laughs> we'll head back to my room in the tavern. It's a safe place to stay until nightfall, Daring whispered. Ginger nodded in agreement and turned to go, intent on making a speedy exit, stage left, before the other pirates came to their senses. She bumped into something. Stage left? Why does it say stage left? Whatever. Surprisingly, I found Disarray standing before us, in his alicorn form, a tie-dye robe, looking at the wreckage of the pirate's tent. He gave me a gleeful look and cracked a cheeky grin. Now that's what I call a falcon punch. <laughs> he proclaimed... Pointing to the destroyed tent. My face paw could be heard in the halls of Asgard. <laughs> See, Asgard again. Hold on, I'm going to Google this. Asgard is like this North mythology thing where like Thor came from or whatever. Anyways... Also, I may have given myself a concussion, or made an already existing one extremely worse. Disarray! Just where were you when all this went down? Daring got up in his face. You could have stopped this before it started! Uh, who is this? Coconut asked me, eyeing the disguised alicorn. Disarray was quite lanky in this form, and stood much taller than he, something I bet upset him a little. Hmm. What? I think there's a missing word there, because this fic has... 
extra and missing words. Much taller than he something. I bet upset him a little. I don't know. Ginger looked confused as well. I realized she didn't know about Disarray's interesting bloodline, nor his ability to shift forms. I warily sighed. This is Disarray. He's a friend, uh, I think. We'll explain it later. That's Disarray? Ginger murmured. The fuck is going on here? I shrugged. The last time I had any idea of what was really going on, I was in a lonely coffee shop, discussing the theoretical physics of a magic with a crusty old fart in a tracksuit. <laughs> Mate, you seem to run into the strangest ponies, Coconut st snorted derivously. Somewhere, somehow, Discord was probably lassing his ass off. Bastard. He had been right, though. I do seem to run into rather extreme situations. Meanwhile, the argument continued. I've said it once. I'll say it twice. I'm here for when you need me, not for when you want me, stated Disarray to a fuming daring do. Although I could see why you wanted me. I know I'm handsome, but please, Mayor, control yourself. <laughs> daring made a curious noise of exasperation before pulling her pith helmet over her head. Several mus muffled curses issued forth from the muted Pegasus. She finally emerged. I think this qualifies as a need situation. He could have died. Uh-huh. But did he? Nope. And I've got no idea how I pulled it off. Ugh. I think I need a drink. Hopefully there's some hard cider at Daring's place. Nope. Well, uh, still. He could have. He is alive. Therefore, you didn't need my assistance. Bam. Argument one. Score. Team me. He stuffed a hoof out and pointed it at her. Lahu Zahar. Oh, Lahu Zahar from Ace Ventura, which is actually a pretty old movie. Okay, whatever. I fail. I really fail at doing that voice. I'm sorry for my failed Lahuzer. He narrowed his eyes at her and poked her in the chest. Loser. <laughs> Whoosh crack. Hey, no fair. Put that thing away. Disarray cried as he was promptly chased away by Daring Do, who was wielding her whip with surprising accuracy. <laughs> the Pegasus uttered several more <laughs> expletives through her the whip in her mouth as she tore off after him. <laughs> expletives. Help! Dormatrix on the loose. Wait. <laughs> This is disarray. Help! Dominatrix on the loose! She'll break out the fuzzy pink hoof cuffs next! Run for your lives! Hide your wife, hide your foes, and hide your husband too! Cause she raping every pony up in here! <laughs> Dis <laughs> disarray screamed from somewhere ahead. Which crack! Wow. She's really freaking good with that thing! Why do I suddenly feel jealous of disarray? This is too kinky for me! Ha 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 ha! Oh, Coconut and I exchanged a glance, while Ginger buried her face in one hoof, muttering something dark under her breath. We should probably go now. Yup. Author's note! I wrote this entire chapter on 419, and then I went to a party. Then I woke up. I looked at my watch, it has date and time, and it was 421. I logged onto film fiction, this chapter had been erased, and this fawn art below was there instead. I have no idea what this chapter was originally like. What the hell did I do on 420, you ask? Your guess is as good as mine. I invite you to come up with a silly story for what I did that day. I triple diamond dog dare you. But I think this is a good representation of whatever I did was. Cheers, every pony. And then it's a picture of a diamond dog. Congrats. Oh shit, I spilled my soda. Okay, bye. Wow. Everybody's face farming this. That was really funny. Just the, di the different stuff that Disarray does, like, la who za her That was epic. And also the whole... Um, Dominatrix on the loose. Had your kids, had your wife. This is too kinky for me. He's a source of excellent, um, internet references. Internet references and illusions and other beautiful stuff like that that you just can't get in other fix um because you don't have like a character that knows all about the internet or something but also a protagonist that knows about the internet 
And then there's also Echo, who's really awesome, but also it's like a really serious fic. So it's comedic and serious at the same time. It's like an anime or something. <sighs> and my soda is now finished. I should totally le learn how to play Engineer's Song. That'd be so epic. I just do a cover of like the whole ad with my own audio. I bet someone already did that though, so whatever. <laughs> 